Tracy Chevalier is known as the woman who wrote The Girl with a Pearl Earring. But her new one is called The Last Runaway. Welcome, Tracy. The, the woman in your story, where did she run away from? Her name's Honor Bright, and she ran away from England, from Dorset specifically. Uh, and she runs to Ohio. She doesn't realize she's running, but that's what she's doing. And this is middle of 19th century? Yeah, 1850. She goes with her sister over to Ohio. Her sister is, is about to get married to someone there. And um, when they arrive there, her sister dies and leaves Honor sort of stranded in Ohio. So what was it about this that, that interested you? Was it Ohio in the mid-19th century? Was it the social feelings in Dorset in the mid-19th century? What was it? Uh, Dorset is just a stepping off point in the book and gets left behind very quickly, although not in Honor's mind. She keeps thinking back. It's, it's really a book about um, immigration, in part, about moving to a new country, what it's like, all the sights, the smells, the sounds, the way the people are and how different they are and how you have to learn how to fit in. Um, and underlying all that is the issue of slavery. There's no slavery in England, but there is in the States at that time. Uh, it's about 11 years before the Civil War, which finally abolished slavery in the US. And um, Honor moves to an area of the States where there are a lot of runaway slaves passing through from the South trying to get to Canada where they would be, have freedom. And she ends up working on what they called the Underground Railroad, which was this network of a loose secret network of people who helped slaves move north. So they would hide them, they would transport them, they would feed them, um, all that to get them north. So although The Last Runaway is a work of fiction, it's built on the fact of this Underground Railway. Yes, yes. It's, um, the Underground Railroad is, a, is sort of an iconic part of American history. Not so much known outside of the States, but in every school kid in the States learns about the Underground Railroad, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, these heroes and heroines of the Underground Railroad. And I make up a cast of characters, but uh, in fact, Honor Bright uh, is, a, is a Quaker. And a lot of Quakers worked on the Underground Railroad. Um, because they believed in the principle of equality among all people, and they were always opposed to slavery. Um, they were early abolitionists, and they worked, a lot of them worked risking their lives. Because if you, if you worked on the Underground Railroad and you got caught, uh, you could be fined or imprisoned and lose your livelihood. So it was quite a risky thing to do. So what was the, the role in, um, in Ohio society of Quakers? Were they revered or was it um, an oppressed minority? What was it? They weren't exactly an oppressed minority, but they were, um, they were not revered. They were seen as oddballs, eccentrics, um, a sort of Christian sect who, uh, you know, they, they didn't take their hats off to people. They didn't, uh, they wouldn't swear on the Bible in court. They refused to serve in the army because they were pacifists. So there were a lot of things about them that people found um, off-putting or un they were uncertain about. And some Quakers uh, worked on the Underground Railroad, but a lot of others refused to help runaway slaves because they were afraid, look, we're looked at as outsiders enough. We don't want to be seen to be going against the government um, in, in this way. So. There's a lot of conflict in the book. It's not as obvious that Quakers are all good in the book. Actually, a lot of them are conflicted. And for Honor, arriving with these sort of very principles uh, from England about slavery, about op opposition to slavery, the reality of putting those principles into practice in a country that where slavery is the is is part of the fabric of the of the country, and it's um, you could be imprisoned if you go against it. Uh, she finds it very hard, and I think it's really her learning how to put her principles into action and, and learning to become an American as well. Did you call her Honor mm -hmm. for a reason? I love the name. I think it's a, it's a very old-fashioned name, and yeah, I suppose there is something behind that, that she, she has to live up to it, her, her name. And writing about mid-19th century, writing about slavery, writing about the Quakers, what was the emotional effect on you that you learned? Did you find yourself um, supporting, going, yeah, 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 for the Quakers? What, what was happening? I've always, uh, when I grew up, I, was, I went to a Quaker camp. So I'm not a Quaker um, now, I'm not a member, uh, but I still go to meeting occasionally. I really love the silence because Quakers sit in silence for an hour on a Sunday. They don't have hymns and a sermon and all that. They sit quietly for an hour and I really appreciate that silence. But 
Um, one of the things that really surprised me when I was researching was to discover that Quakers were not as, as perfect as they sound. Um, a lot of them, some Quakers kept slaves in the 18th century, even though they were supposed to be opposed to slavery. Other Quakers, um, during the 19th century, I read that uh, some meetings had what they called the Negro Pew, which meant that there were some black members, but they were not allowed to sit with white members. They would sit separately. And this just astonished me. But you know, I think it made for a more interesting, a more nuanced book, a more nuanced story, because um, it meant that you know, it's better not to have hero heroes and heroines who are too good. And um, the Quakers in this book are not too good. Tracy Chevalier, thank you. The book is called The Last Runaway.